Hey, good morning, everybody. I'd like to welcome everybody back to the CCWSA podcast. My name is Rob Hyde, your host here in Oklahoma City. And today I got a couple of buddies that are guesting. Um, got David Sproles and Jeremy Zimmer, both out of Tennessee. And uh, I'm going to individually give you guys a second to kind of tell a little bit about you and and your your training company and what you're what you're going with right now. Go ahead, Jeremy. Hey. Oh, go ahead, David. Hey, well, good morning, Rob. Thanks for having us. Uh, my name is David Sproles. Uh, my full time gig is I'm a private wealth manager at Sproles Wealth Management. So I'm a financial advisor for my clients, uh, but I've been doing firearms training through Sproles Shooting Instruction. I guess this is my seventh year, and uh, I'm based in Murfreesboro, Tennessee, which is about 25 miles south and east of Nashville. Jeremy? Jeremy Zimmer. I've uh, been training and actually running my training business now for two years uh, this November. So pretty new to it as far as running it, but uh, not new to the training world. Um, outside of that, I am full-time dad. I've got three kids. My wife uh, works full-time. So when I'm not dabbling and playing and training on the range, I'm working with my kids. So uh, busy, busy life, but uh, I'm enjoying it. Good deal. Um. I had the opportunity to meet David and Jeremy both uh, last year in just outside of Nashville at uh, Mickey Shook's S12 training. Um, but I enjoyed their company. I watched how they were working and uh, was excited to, to see what direction that they were going in. Um, David, how did you get your start into firearms training did you were you just a competitive shooter were you just concerned with with home defense what what kind of thing led you down that road to begin with yeah so longtime shooter uh and a longtime student of shooting and so um when we moved back to tennessee we were gone for about six years moved back i think everybody has a friend who's the quote gun guy or the gun gal and people knew me as kind of the gun guy in my friend circle and I'm not a smart guy, but after about a hundred people asked me, Hey Sproles, who should I go get my concealed carry permit through? I kind of saw an opportunity. And so I, I taught for the state of Tennessee and still have that uh, accreditation with them. Um, but what really got me more interested in more training other than just getting your permit was I saw people leave my class with both the permit and realized that most of the people who have the permit can't shoot. And my, my concern was more about, I love to teach. I, I love to teach people and I do it with my daily work. My wife and I teach class at, at church on Sundays and I just love to instruct and help educate people. And I saw an opportunity where I can do more helping people get better at shooting than just the permit side. And so that just grew and grew and grew and grew um, with different types of things I want to teach and how I teach and smaller classes, bigger classes, you know, uh, collaborative things like Jeremy and I just did recently. And I just love to see people get better because I know that walking out with both the piece of plastic in your wallet is the worst self-confidence that people can have when they leave a state training. But generally, at least here in the state of Tennessee, it does not mean that you are a good shooter. And I wanted to help people become better shooters and defenders of innocence. So that's really what drove me through that. Good deal. Yeah, I've found that to be kind of true. No matter which state that you're in, the the licensing process is really nothing more than to get a couple of dollars in the in the state coffers and yep. keep keep moving forward um i like the fact that at least there is some type of uh at least background checks and things like that that we know that that we're dealing with with a responsible adult most of the time um but it really is kind of frightening you know, I'm not opposed to constitutional carry. I, I think that's great. I don't have any issue with with people not being permitted or licensed um, as long as those people are doing their due diligence and getting proper training. That's that's a big deal. Jeremy, how would you get down this road? Oh, it's it, it actually goes back about six years. Um, I, I was collecting. I love guns. Just love taking to the range and shooting all kinds of different guns. And uh, I had a guy that was actually coming out to our house. We we're doing remodeling 
and he was a, a painter and he saw me cleaning one of my guns one day and the conversation grew from there. He said, you ever competition shoot? You ever do any IDPA, USPSA? Long story short there, I got into IDPA thinking competition was the way and then realized, I don't know, probably six, seven matches into it, I was at a fork in the road. Was I wanting to do this to get better with my gun and def defensive uh, level shooting? Or was I going to be this competitor shooter guy that, uh, you know, that just focused on the competitive side of it and went out and gamed it all? And I, I realized then it was more about protection. It was more about self-protection, protecting my family. I had also worked in church safety and security and had a position there where I realized we've got guys carrying guns in here that, again, kind of like what David said, they, they're like, oh, I got my permit. I'm good to go. And it was one of those moments like you have no idea. And I, and it's, it's true. You don't know what you don't know. And that's kind of where it started. And I, I was one of those, look, don't get me wrong. I was one of those that loved to do the, the social shoots. You know, you take all your buddies to the range and you take hundreds and hundreds of rounds, if not thousands of rounds, and y'all just do all kinds of shooting and mag dumps. And that didn't do it for me anymore. That was one of those things where I'm like, there's so much more to this than, than people realize. And, and I, I still see it today when we do these marketing events in Columbia, Tennessee, I get to engage and talk with people and they, their first reaction is when they see what I do and I'm explaining what I do, they, they look at me and say, well, I got my permit. Don't worry about it. I'm good. And that is like, you know, the, the, the big red flag for me, like, sure, sure you do. You just, and I, I hate it. I hate to hear that because I hate to think that there's a possibility that they do get involved in something and they can't perform. They can't do what they need to do. Uh, whether that's to protect themselves or protect a loved one. Um, my wife and I now co-teach some of these classes and it's, we put an emphasis on really educating families and that's, that, that is including everybody in the training process. So it, it's grown a lot over the last year. It's, it's funny how things change over the course of a year, but um, that that's kind of where I started and, and how I got here. I still like to shoot IDPA. I still do that stuff but I focus on it in a, in a different way than I think most, I mean, most of them are thinking how to game something, whereas yeah. I'm still treating every weapon manipulation and every reload is, is not the gaming side of it for me. So it's another way to get reps and get the, you know, some guys get the, a little bit of adrenaline rush when they're doing that. I kind of like it. So that's, that's for me. <laughs> no, it's all good stuff. Um, I think it's really important that, like you're saying, you know, we've, we've talked about with our members over and over and over again, um, get a full, well-rounded training. Um, you know, Matthew Little, he actually from Chicago, but he's, he's now down in uh, Texas, Matt and Angela. Um, but Matt was, was a special forces guy. He was a Chicago cop. He ran their SWAT team for a long time super good shooter, super good couple. They're just, they're really good people. Um, and I was, I was hearing him teach a couple of years ago and he was, it was kind of a break. It was, they, they were pulled back off the line. They were undercover and they were just sitting there talking and he was explaining to those folks um, about it, it's one thing to sit here and, and learn how to function a firearm. It's, it's another thing to put that into play in a real life self-defense scenario. And you need to come to terms with what that outcome might be before you're ever involved in that scenario. Um, and I've, I've seen that working with members that have been involved in self-defense incidents that after the fact, and they are just almost broken because they just had no earthy idea all the things that were going to be coming their way um so you know to have somebody that comes in and can give you uh legal training you know cover the cover the legal aspects of that you know we're very very fortunate we've got don west as our national trial counsel andrew branka from the law of self-defense is a big supporter um and those guys can can break things down like that. And self-defense is really 
pretty much the same thing across the country. It doesn't matter what jurisdiction you're in, really. Um, but what does matter is who those judges are that are elected and the DAs that are elected that, that look at things through very, very rose-colored glasses, either way left or way right. Hmm. Um, but to, to continue that thought, you know, I really like, you know, get some training from some military guys, get some training for some, from some law enforcement guys, get some training for guys that don't have a background in either one of those. Um, the, the level of training available in the civilian population is far exceeding what most police departments in this country will ever see. Um, I've been, I've been a firearms trainer for, I don't know, 26, 27 years now. And I was astounded when I retired and started going to public trainings. And it was like, oh my goodness, these guys are legit. Uh, so I, I have, I've fallen in love with this community. It's such a big deal. Um, and people aren't afraid to, to go out and stretch and get better and, and push the limits in a safe environment. Um, I don't know. What, what are some of the things that, that you're doing out there, Sproles, that, that might be unique to your training style? You, man, you made so many good points, Rob, about the availability of training, uh, getting different kinds of training. I mean, I, I, Jeremy and I, neither one of us, I don't want to speak for him, but neither one of us have a law enforcement or military background. However, I do think that, um, one, if you're going to be looking at a trainer, I think you need to look at their, tra their own training pedigree. We say that all the time. I mean, the person you're going to train with, and this is no knock against somebody who served in our military, but mm -hmm. I, I think people say, well, my uncle was in the Marine Corps, so he, he taught me how to shoot. Well, thank you, sir, for your service, but that does not mean he's a good instructor. He may be a great instructor, right? So I think looking at a trainer, the, the trainer you're considering to go to, what's their pedigree? Uh, obviously, safety for them has to be way, way up on, on that. But looking at their pedigree, uh, I think it's important. And the other thing is, I, I, I'm not going to mention names, but I took a, a well, well-known firearms instructor in the United States. If I said his name, everybody would know who he is. He's an amazing shooter, served our country in a, in a really amazing way took his all-day class on, on defensive pistol. He was a terrible instructor. Yeah. He was a great shooter, and he could do everything. But his thing was, here, guys, go do this. And he ran the drill. And while we're running the drill, he's running his own drills and practicing his stuff. He was not focused on the student. Yeah. So the one thing I think that I do maybe a little differently is I, I'm a much better instructor than I am a shooter. Uh, I think I'm a good diagnostician with, with students when if they're making mistakes or missing something and not missing the target, but, you know, missing a fundamental or whatever, being able to diagnose that and then train the person. I think that's a really, really something you need to focus on if you're finding a trainer is, are they a good teacher? Are they a good instructor? Um, so I th one thing that we do is I focus a lot on obviously the fundamentals, which I think most good instructors will do. I try not to teach quote tactics. Jeremy and I just did a, a collaborative class together about three weeks ago. And I like to build scenario-based classes. And so I did a couple in the fall that it took months and months to really develop. You know, if you are going to be a good instructor, you just don't go out and say, let's do these drills. It's going to be perfect. You've got to really think through it, know your student, know their skill set. And you may have a wide variety of skill sets showing up for an intermediate class. Uh, and then be able to build those drills on themselves to be able to come to this culmination event at the end that says, okay, the drills we did at nine o'clock made a whole lot more sense. We got to one thirty, and boy, I could not have done the four o'clock culmination drill without all those other, those other skills. Correct. So I think the transferable skill, whether the, the scenario that I did in the fall was an incident response class. And the whole thing was when we get to the culmination event, be thinking that you're in the movie theater with your family and you step out to go to the bathroom and you hear gunfire going on in the theater. Well, if my family wasn't inside, a logical response was, I'm going to beat feet and get out of there. With my wife and kids and granddaughter in there, for me, that's not an option. So how do you respond to things like that? I think scenario base is good to get your head there, but then you can't really tell people, stand behind this garbage can or go to the corner of this car or those types of things, because that's going to be scenario based when they get into the incident. But the skills of knowing how to move with a loaded firearm or 
or how to shoot while you're moving and how your feet need to be working together and all those things. Those are the skills I like to help people develop that then they can transfer to church setting, mall setting, you know, uh, shopping center, office, whatever. So that's one thing I like to do differently is, is really kind of get a scenario in your head and then build the skills that you can transfer that to other scenarios. How about you, Jeremy? The, the last uh, event that actually Sproles and I did, actually it was really exciting putting that together because that was kind of a culmination of a lot of what I had been wanting to do in my classes. So we, we run, obviously, again, hit those fundamentals good and hard and make sure we get those established because I, I get people even in intro classes that they see the range set up. I've got some junk cars staged at another part of the range that everybody gets real excited about because they're like, Oh, cool. We might get to shoot around cars or we might get to shoot through a window or something like that. And while that's fun for them to get excited about, they don't realize right off the bat that, Hey, the class you're in, you're not ready for that yet. Yeah. Um, like Sproul said, we really harp on how to move in and out of crowded areas with a loaded firearm people don't think about that when they think firearms train immediately they immediately think can you hit this target can you run to this spot and hit this target and they don't think about all the friendlies that are all possibly running all over the place screaming and pushing on you and all that kind of stuff um but when we did that i mean it, it's it's a hard focus on how you move and like like Sproul said too we what we did in that class our, our culmination training drill was centered around parking lot gas station setting and of course people want to know a highlighted route hey what should i do here and yeah. and the and the truth comes down to it is no it's it's not you've got to make that decision on the fly and what i was getting to those people was hey whatever decision you make stick with it run with it and make it make it through it because in a in a crisis moment like that you may make the wrong decision you may move the wrong direction but you don't have time to say let me start over and try that again you've got to work through it and that's that's where i put the stress on them to decide and work through the other thing i like to do when we started doing this in our more advanced pistol class is again pushing the stress on people and i've picked up a lot of stuff from instructors over the last year especially I, I often talk with david about how much growth i have experienced personally uh, on the instructor level and just in my personal growth of focusing on being able to emulate what some of these other instructors have put on me and be able to then put it on students and say hey this is a stressful situation this isn't a we're standing still drawing and two shots and that's game over and it's it's done so a lot of movement in those advanced pistol classes and we fo the focus is not so much hey i know i know you can shoot a little bit but show me you can move safely with the gun and that's that's a real big real big part of what we teach yeah that's good stuff um man that's that's such a big deal um i i'd always tell police recruits when i was running the academy that you know we got to First, we got to learn how to roll over, you know, then we start learning how to how to pick our heads up a little bit and then we can crawl a little bit and then we get up and we're very unstable. You know, but all those things come before we run. Um, and it's like that with any. Any skill set that we're trying to build, especially a lethal skill set. Um, so if you don't have those those initial cornerstones in place. The rest of the thing is just going to fall apart. I mean, it's just you're you're doomed from from the get go, you know. And we've all trained with guys that that think that they're they have the stuff, you know. That and you you see them anytime you go out, and all of a sudden, you know, they think, "Well, I'm going to get this surge of adrenaline, and I'm just going to I'm just going to turn into Superman," and that is the farthest thing that could ever be true. <laughs> You know, it's you, so interesting, Rob. You say that because at, at the last, the last event, you know, these guys are coming up, and we had I don't know about twenty shooters at this class, twenty students, and one of the last guys gets up there, and he'd been a pretty good shooter all day, right? And we had been moving them and left to right, a little bit of forward and back, you know, shooting off balance and the stuff, and he had he performed pretty well, and got up to this 
last culmination event, I kind of laid down the groundwork. Here's what we're going to do. And Jeremy was at the staging area where they're going to start. And, and dude's already, you know, standing at this car and the simulation was you're filling up your gas, you get out to fill up your gas tank. All of a sudden, you know, three armed guys are up on top of you trying to carjack you or whatever. Jeremy, I think blows the whistle and dude freezes. He goes yeah. to his gun and he stops. And, and I was watching, I was like, what, what did he not understand? Did he not hear the whistle? You know, sometimes it can be loud. And it's like, no, he just froze and he, he stopped. He said, okay, okay, can I start again? And, you know, that was safety. He probably didn't proceed. I'm glad he didn't. And he ended up running the drill pretty well. But to your point, that was the most stressful situation of the day. And the adrenaline dump that hadn't happened was probably going to happen there. And it did. And he just froze. Yep. Ended up ultimately running the drill pretty well. But he realized, I think, hopefully, he realized that, man, the, the old, I'm going to rise to the occasion is a terrible, terrible slogan. You're going to sink to the level of your best training. Yeah. And and he he just kind of he just kind of froze. And so those are, I think it was realization for him. It's like, wow, this is, this is, this is not a, this is not call of duty on PlayStation. David, I, I think part of that, and I, I experienced this with a couple of them because they all asked me when they got up there, well, which way do you want me to go? Right. <laughs> and I, I had to tell them, I said, no, that, that is your choice. Like that is you. <laughs> That's your job. Okay. And uh, of course they, they, you know, I had, I think there was one in there that did say something like, well, are, are we going to hit that target? And then that target, how are we, and I said, I'm blowing the whistle. You execute the scenario I've given you. Yep. And, and, and yeah, too, too many people, I think too many people just think it's going to be this straightforward, you know, kind of like IDPA. That's why I can compare it to a little IDPA because IDPA is a little bit more straightforward. Occasionally you get a stage where you have some options, but, ultimately the path is laid out for you yeah so you know when yeah. i when i hear somebody say well i'm i'm pretty good at competition shooting i'm like i shoot that and i know that there's a huge difference there yep. so yeah the, the unknown is the factor uh that i think often will freeze people so yeah. again it comes back to this the skills you know in a in a multiple threat environment you know, generally speaking you're going to shoot closest first then work on the far away ones but sometimes that's not perfect right so those scenarios for the, the students it was very interesting to see at that culmination yeah it's i don't know it, it it just floors me that people i mean you would never go guess what today i'm going to be a boxer <laughs> well you might <laughs> it would be a terrible life to step in with whoever and you just get get your cage rattled or, yeah. or you know anything that that has uh a skill set that takes time to develop. Nobody just comes out on day. Now I've seen some guys that are that are really, as far as hand eye and and yep. strength and things that are really fast to pick things up. But yep. it's not the general population. You know, most of us have to work at our craft to to get better at anything. Um, you know it. It's one of those that. I, I almost wish that we could do it like a belt program, like you do in martial arts. Yeah. yeah. You know, and that oh, the guy comes in and it's like, oh, okay, I got a green belt today. He's he's got a little bit of experience under his belt, but I'm gonna pay attention to the yellow and white belts over there. Those guys are gonna need a little bit of extra focus. Right. Um, because we can come into any firearms class and represent ourselves as whatever. Um I was invited when I was still in law enforcement to uh, a uh, defensive tactics instructor course that the department of justice put on. It was by invitation only. And it was 50 hours a week for five weeks. It was miserable. Holy cow. And, and the, the culmination, your final test was a 20 minute fight test against the staff. That's not something you just walk into and do. And it was it was amazing. We had uh, 21 people begin the class, 12 graduated. Wow. And day one and day two, there was kind of a steady stream as they're evaluating guys that are that are there. And all of a sudden they come over and put their hand on your shoulder and go, Hey, we want to want to thank you for coming out and give this a shot. But you are you are not ready for this course. And it, it was one of the few in law enforcement I ever took that did that. 
Uh, so that, that was one of those that you, when you came out on the other end of that meat grinder, you, you were pretty proud about that accomplishment, but, uh, you know, most, most gunfights last eight seconds or less. Yeah. Most fights last 30 seconds or less. People don't realize that. So once you, once you've pressure tested things to that degree, um, there should be. A measure of confidence that comes with that but you know my biggest deal is is letting letting people know that the guy on the other side he has a say in this right yeah i don't i don't get to get to tell you what he's he's grown up with um you guys both know paul sharp you know we yeah. had paul on the show a little while back and and we were talking about something and I i couldn't count how many times i've seen this but it was one of these things that after he brought it up, it was like, golly, that makes so much sense. And he was talking about uh, doing uh, an entry on a known bad guy house where you know the guy has guns. He's got a he's got a violent history and you're going in geared up. You got shields and long guns and whatever. And. You know, you got a whole team coming in and breaching the door and all of a sudden as you're going through the house and it could be three or four o'clock in the morning and you've got, you know, four kids between seven and 11 years old that are standing in front of a big screen TV and they're pissed off because you're getting in their way of their game. And that kid eventually grows up to be the next evolution of gangbanger and you know, even law enforcement comes running up with a gun in their hand. <laughs> you're not going to face that kid. He's not afraid of what you're doing. Yeah. He's been there and done that his whole entire life. And, and the other thing is they don't have any rules to play by. You know, they, they don't care that there's not a safe backdrop behind you. If they're going to shoot at you, they're just going to shoot at you. Yeah. Um, so understanding those kind of things. And, and until you've got, till you're looking at the wrong end of a muzzle things are things are all safe you know your your perspective changes so dramatically once a round has been fired your direction in anger that perspectives on everything change from that day forward it's you know something over here that would have pissed me off you know five years ago is water off a duck's back now that is no big deal um, you know, what are the, what are the critical necessary things in life? Um, tell me a little bit about this, this course you guys just did the collaboration on. It looked like it was a great course. Yeah, does anyone tell them? Yeah. Uh, so we started off, I took actually how this all kind of spawned was I took a incident response class with Sproles that he mentioned earlier, the whole movie theater setting. And I knew going through that class immediately at the end of it, I said, this dude and I are on the same page of going through scenario based stuff and then wanting to actually put that stress on the student and do it in a safe environment where it's okay if you mess up, how did you mess up and how can we work through it? So yeah, I, I immediately told Sproles after that class, I said, man, we need to do something together and we need to put it in the books and let's, let's work on it. So yeah, we, we started with the basics, but the, the idea of the course was, this wasn't going to be a basic, it wasn't going to be a master level, but it was going to be a nice mix of, we're going to run you through the fundamentals, make sure you got good safe weapons handling in that realm, static shooting. And then we were going to escalate it and we were going to move it up and start adding some stressors in there, whether it was moving while shooting and then moving and bounding with another person uh, and engaging threats as we lays those targets. Uh, so that, that actually, the part I think, that I received the most feedback on uh, in that section of the class, the bounding was people then realizing muzzle awareness and understanding complete and total domination of the muzzle uh, in those scenarios, whether you're moving with somebody or not, I've got three kids. So my idea, anytime I put this out there for people in the, and putting together these drills is the idea, Hey, if you've got kids, are you going to have your muzzle down by your, you're, you're pointing down at the ground in front of you or at your side. I've got three kids. They're all pretty short at this point. They're all at the ground. No, I'm not going to be there at all. So 
it was about provi providing perspective. Hey, what are you going to do in this situation? What are you doing with your muzzle when you're having to move with children or your wife? And does your wife know what you're going to do in these crisis moments? And does she know what she needs to do kind of thing? Uh, we, we, I mean, it was actually kind of funny because we did most of our collaboration just like this. We talked yeah. about the drills uh, via FaceTime, whatever. And here I was in my first co-teaching class with this man that I'm like, hey, it's David Sproles. <laughs> it's it's Sproles. Don't mess with Sproles, right? So, um, you know, I was a nervous wreck because I was like, okay, I'm a very visual dude. So, I mean, even days before class, weeks before class, I'm going out there and I'm walking through everything. And I know it's a good idea and good habit to be in, but I mean, I was doing that while popping a modium. So, <laughs> but, uh, but no, like, and, and getting down to this, the, the unique training experience that I wanted to offer with the range setup that I have, and David will tell you too, is you don't get that anywhere. And you don't get that, especially in an indoor range environment where we have the type of spaces you can move around cars, six or seven cars out there. Um, I've got walls built up for room entry. And again, while we're not, teaching tactics we're teaching kind of the have have common sense about what you're doing think through what you're doing um and 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 make some of the the firearm manipulations all that stuff second nature where your your brand, bandwidth isn't tied up what you're doing with the gun you're doing safe things with the gun you can focus on the threat that's kind of where i went with that and and david i mean whew, I had people telling me at the end of class, it looked like we'd been working together for years. And that, that made me feel like we hit a home run with it. Yeah. yeah I, I, I would agree. I mean, first of all, we had a lot of fun. We got in great feedback. And I think that was just, it's not about honestly about how good of instructors we are, but we were very intentional about how we, how we uh, paced out the day. You know, it's, it's interesting. The first, <clears throat> at least the way that I teach, and I know that Jeremy does because we just did it. I think making sure for the first couple hours honestly, in a full day class, we went from nine to five 30. I think it was, it was a long day is the first couple hours is just honing in on the, on the basics. And you can see people getting a little itchy. It's like, okay, when are we going to get to the fun stuff? Yeah. Like to Rob, to your point, you can't run until you know, you can lift your head up and, and walk pretty well yeah. because to Jeremy's point, when it's time to draw that gun and, and you've got to do a reload, you should not be, wait, are my bullets facing the right way on my mag reload or, or, Okay, where do I do I need to catch that mag? None of that. That should just be fluid and not thinking. Well, that doesn't happen if you don't know it's honed in on your student. So and we just we had a lot, a lot of fun. Um, I think one thing that we got a lot of feedback on that was important was we had we did have about 20 shooters, and we had some people who were, I mean, we had fellow instructors, we had a couple other instructors there who took the course. All of them were good students. And that is if you are going to be a student of shooting, be open to coaching be open to learning and, and walk in with your, your ego and maybe your creds in your back pocket and be open to coaching. Um, so that was one thing I'd coach anybody on if you're going to take training, just go in with an open, open mind and, and open ears. But we had people on, on the spectrum pretty broadly. And the one thing we focused on is, and everybody's been like this. If you go into a class, you're looking at everybody's like, I wonder what that person's shooting or they've got cooler gear than I do, or, you know, how big's their magazine and all this other stuff. I'm like, don't worry about the person next to you. Find one or two things that you want to improve on today. And if you get from a, a five to a seven today, but you've been successful. That's a big step. Yeah, it's yep. what, it was huge. And for that person, they couldn't go from five to 10. And we had some st students going from eight to 10, right? But if you're a five shooter and you want to get better, just make sure you're getting to a six or seven. Then the class was successful. Then come back and take a different one later. But we just had a lot of fun collaborating and, and really trying to individualize and, and focus uh, on the individual student on where they were at. And we had some that were great shooters, some that were good shooters. Uh, but I think they all had a good time. Good, good. Um, now, David, do you travel around or, or do you have a, a home range that that is basically your your base of operations. What do you do? Yeah, it's a great question. That's on that's on my <laughs> 2024 list. Is I have historically taught at some friends. So I live in Middle Tennessee. So lots of buddies who have good property that we can go train on. I love to train outdoors. Jeremy, I, I love him, but I hate him at the same time because his range is fantastic. I love what uh, he's doing right now. Yeah, yeah, it's just a great range. He's he's really intentionally thought through setting it up. 
Um, so I will travel. Uh, I've been invited to come to North Carolina. I've, uh, Jeremy and I got invited to come to Knoxville, do some classes maybe later this fall. Um, so happy to do that. Uh, again, being my side gig, you know, I, I like what I do every day, uh, you know, nine to five. Uh, I'm normally doing that on weekends and I have, you know, two grown kids and they're gone. So my, my flexibility is pretty high, but yeah, I'll travel and go wherever people want me to train. Um, but yeah, working on getting a, my own range sometime this year, hopefully. Very cool. And, and Jeremy, I, well, Sproul's you're in Murfreesboro. Right. But gorgeous, gorgeous. I, my grandparents were from Tullahoma, so I'm, I'm yeah. very familiar with that part of the part of the world and it's God's country. Um, where are you at, Jeremy? Columbia? I'm in Columbia, Tennessee, and then my range is actually about uh, an a half hour south of me in, in Giles County, uh, okay. not not too far from Pulaski, actually. So, okay. um, to his point, though, training outdoors is oh you, yes, you, you cannot beat that. You cannot beat that. Um, and I'm I'm also Sproul says I'm willing to travel as well. Being being kind of new in the area, I'm still kind of planting my seeds where I can with some of the uh, local gun shops and then anybody who's got a range and wants us to come out or wants just me to come out. Sometimes people just don't like David and that's understandable. Very <laughs> but, uh, but uh, you know, I, I, I've put that together and I, I've got, I mean, goodness, I've based this kind of business. We all know who I'm talking about here, but I kind of based a lot of how I'm putting things together like someone else in the business and I'm willing to travel. So if that opportunity arises, I'm absolutely there ready to do it. That's yeah. Nice. I think to Jeremy's point too, um, I, I think Jeremy said it at our last class is if you ever hear a trainer say, this is the only way to do it, probably, probably need to ask some questions, but also the other thing that, you know, Jeremy and I both do, and I've, we've trained with, I've trained with a lot of different people. I'm very blessed to train, man. I'm, I will give credit where credit is due when we're talking about a drill or I learned this here, or this is this person's philosophy. And you've got to be, as a student, you've got to be cautious of the trainers who don't ever give credit to other people. Um, because either one, they have never taken other classes or two, they're not being honest and they're plagiarizing without giving credit where they've learned those things. And I've learned so much from great instructors. Um, man, I, I've just I've been able to take some great classes from other fantastic instructors and i learn something every time yeah and uh hopefully one day someone will refer to something they learned from me and say i learned this from this guy but i don't care about that <laughs> but i also don't want someone saying this was my idea when it wasn't so to jeremy's right. point and learning from good instructors man, make sure your instructors you're training from are giving credit where it's due i i, I i'll, I'll put that, that a little bit, bit because because I, I, I start every class with telling people right off the bat, hey, first of all, don't let this be the end of your training. Don't think that yep. this is the end all be all. And then secondly, go find another instructor and go take. I don't care if it's the same level class of what we're doing here or if it's a step up, step down, whatever. You will get different perspectives and you will find different drills. There is not enough hours. You could run a, a six day course and still not hit all the drills there are out there that focus on individual and isolation drills on certain things. There's just so many out there. So find another instructor who's going to throw some other stuff at you, give you another perspective for sure. I, I would, that would be extremely selfish and just self-serving if I said, yeah, this is my way and it's, it's the way I coined it. And this is the only way to do it. And that just doesn't, that doesn't sit well with me, especially with how many I've trained with now. So. Well, I can tell you, we ran, recruits and they on the entry level they got about 96 hours of firearms and that made most of them safe enough to walk around with a gun on your hip wow <laughs> they weren't gunfighters yeah. um, you know you don't, you don't ever know if somebody's a gunfighter until they're in the fight uh but you can sure train them up to, to run the thing. Yep. Um, they have to have all the other uh, mental prep and everything else that comes with that to be able to, to successfully engage. Um, I want you guys to give me, give me a couple each of, of who, who you've taken from, who you've trained through that 
that you really got gold nuggets from? Well, I, I mean, Jeremy's probably going to mention some of the same, some of the folks I've trained with, probably the one that I don't think Jeremy's trained with yet that is different than who he's going to mention. And I would agree with who he's going to mention, but I'm going to add one. I don't think he's going to talk about is Bob Keller with Gamma Resolutions. Bob is in Sarasota, retired unit guy. And uh, <clears throat> I've had the privilege of having him in my home twice over the last uh, eight or nine months. Posted two of his classes, uh, intermediate uh, rifle carbine, uh, rifle pistol class, and then his advanced uh, carbine pistol class. First of all, just one of the most humble down to earth guys I've ever met. You would not know his pedigree if you just walked up and met with him. Uh, and the thing I love about training with Bob Keller, uh, one, he's hysterical. He does not take himself too seriously, um, but he does not make things complicated. And he's like, he will tell you the easier and the simpler, the better. And, but man, some of the best training I've ever had. And uh, I'm working on going down with a couple of buddies and, and he'll do private training at his place down in Sarasota uh, and just go to do a two day, you know, very specialized training and he'll do that you know it's, he doesn't do it for free uh but it's it's worth it if you've got the bandwidth to go do that very cool uh, yeah he's just a great great guy and an amazing pedigree and and uh he he's the type who is the beautiful combination of the three things one he's done it two he can still do it and three he's an amazing instructor yeah. and there aren't a whole lot of those people out there who their venn diagram hits all three some can do it some can instruct some have done it and can instruct, but they can't still do it. So uh, he, he's got a great combination of all those things. Nice. Oh, and the one nugget from him is you get tired of the, the ready up drill. I mean, you will, you will spend six hours doing ready up drills and you are about to kill somebody. And then you realize that's all that matters. I mean, if you can get that gun up fast and put that dot on there, speaking of a rifle and, and place your shots where you want to, no matter what distance, on running running a rifle that's what it, that's what it's about so mm. well i i would say look i I've, I've got i'm going to i'm going to mention 3 and two of them are closely knit together uh because of how i came across them um Mickey Shook with Carry Trainer i started there uh actually the funny story quick story about how i even found him was I was checking out some other trainers on YouTube. I don't know, got bored, something. I fell asleep with my notebook, notepad and my pen in my hands, fell asleep. I woke up to this guy, Mickey, who I still had <laughs> no who idea who that was, yelling all kinds of crazy things at somebody on the line. <laughs> <laughs> and I thought, I initially thought that I was put into a, like it passed me on to a parody of a trainer on the range. <laughs> I thought that's what I was watching. And for, I said, you know what? I'll give this a few minutes. And then 10 minutes in, and I was like, all right, so who is this dude? So did some more checking. And my wife ended up buying me a, a registration to S12. Uh, which is their big event. You you both know about that's how I met you guys um, went there and eyes open big for that event. Um, overwhelming. Definitely at the, at the first of it, um, which looking back on it, I needed that. It needed to be that way. Uh, it was just a heavy dose of life and everything just all coming into one Um and I, and, and, you know, cause I talked to you that set those two nights as well, uh, Rob. So the Mickey shook the way he brings it, it's not for everybody. Uh, some people sit there and, and can't get past some of the jokes, but let me tell you when he's serious and he needs you to take in something, you know, it, and that stuck with me because my personality on the range, David will tell you, I do like to have fun with people. And I feel like more information sticks with people when they have fun doing it. Um, so I, I bring a little bit of that, that, uh, that sense of humor as well. Uh, so that, that was one Mickey shook. And then the other one I met who the first time I met him, that guy, I thought, I thought he's just going to break me in half, uh, <laughs> is Z Durham. Yeah. And, you know, he just looks at you and I can feel bones in my body breaking with him just looking at me. <laughs> so 
you know, I, I, there was that. And I said, you know what, I'm going to, I'm going to try a class with him eventually. I don't think I'm ready for that yet. Um, <laughs> he, he looked like he wanted to kill me. I'm not going to. So, I'm just, but anyways, I took a class with him and, and I still give him, there is one trigger isolation drill. I know he got it from somewhere else, but he hit on it in that class and that stuck with me. And I said, you know what, that's going to be, that's got to be a staple point when we start talking trigger control in, in any classes that I teach. And uh, David was there when we, we did a trigger isolation drill. And mm -hmm. I absolutely said, I was like, look, this is coming from a dude who's special forces, plenty of the, the, the pedigree that you look at when you're like, okay, who's this, where did you get this from? And I've had a couple people tell me, Oh, that's the first time I've ever done that. That's amazing. Jeremy's got this drill. And I'm like, Jeremy got this drill from someone else. Yeah. So uh, <laughs> those two, especially, <laughs> um played a key role especially in the last year i did s12 a second time um had a, a totally different experience the second time uh and and that that was to be expected uh, I, because of just i knew what was going going in obviously but then i could turn my brain off of the instructor mode and be the student and uh that is a huge part of, of training for instructors is if they can just turn off the instructor crap for just a minute for a couple hours and take in the student role. Uh, last one I'll mention, and I just uh, earlier this year did it, was Warrior Poet Society's uh, uh, John Lovell's Essential Pistol class, his Pistol 2 class. Um, John Lovell, cool dude. Um, we took the class directly from his battle gnome, I think they call him, <laughs> which no joke, he's like to my eyebrow, but his biceps are as big as my head. He, he just another dude that looks at you wrong and it'll break you in half. <laughs> and uh, I, one unique perspective that they brought in that class that I was surprised to find in a pistol two course was we had an hour and a half session of a hybrid force on force. And it was, I say hybrid because we used the guns for force on force, but we were shooting blanks and it was an hour and a half of put you in a scenario and he did not highlight a route for you to go deal with it. That's what he gave us. And then we broke it down. It was, everybody got a turn and there was a constant like, Hey, there's not, we're not going to say this was the wrong way. We want to know why you did it, why your brain told you to do it this way. And so uh, that, that was a unique thing that I took away from that. That stuck with me as well. So three awesome dudes um, can't, can't speak enough to those, especially those two first ones. Good stuff. Good, good stuff. Now I'm going to stay on that, on that same path. Who's, who's next? Who's out there that you want to go see? Who, who do you want to learn from? I'll, I'll go. So I'm, I'm going to hopefully, I mean, I go back. So this is how much Mickey has affected me in NS12. And this, we're not, we're not trying to stroke his ego at all, but the, the, the training class that, that he does S12 um, is an impressive place. I, I, same thing. My wife said, go do it. Sounds like a great time. So I mean, it's five days out of your life. I know not everyone can do that. It's not an inexpensive class. It's a lot of ammo. You got to travel to get there. Probably you don't live 45 minutes away like, like Jeremy and I do. <clears throat> so, but I go back on staff uh, every time Mickey will have me as a volunteer. And so this is uh, this fall, I think will be my sixth time to be at S12. So I believe it enough. And I learn something every time from all the instructors like Paul and Z and you guys and Mick. So that's, that's on, in the fall, hopefully going back and doing a Bob Keller class, uh, a private class, private instruction. I'd love to take uh, either a pistol and or rifle class from uh, Kyle DeFore. Mm -hmm. Getting in with Kyle DeFore is, I mean, his classes fill up in a hot second. Um, and so he, he's on my list of, can I, can I somehow get on a class somewhere near me or, or a place easy to travel to? So he's on my list, hopefully for 2024, that I'll be able to take a class with Kyle. I'd love to take a, a carbine class with him. Good, good, good. Okay. Uh, I've got a couple, <laughs> I've got a couple, uh, I would like to visit back and do a rifle course with John level. Yeah. Uh, I've, I've heard nothing but great things about that. And then Sproles has actually got me digging into Bob Keller and, and wanting to know more. And I, I, I definitely want to hit that. And then Tom Givens mm. love to hear and, and actually in whatever capacity, I mean, there's been other instructors where I've volunteered and said, Hey, 
maybe not as a student, but can I come just observe for half your class or just, and I said, I'm not there to steal stuff. I just, I, I can't either, either your class was booked up and I couldn't get in or I, I don't have time to invest your three day course. Can I at least come for just one day, you know, stuff like that. But I, I would definitely want to get on with Tom Gibbons sometime here that maybe chalk that up to my 2024 because my funds for training this year are dwindling. So <laughs> I, I'm going to tell you, um, his TACCON conference every spring is as good a collection. It, it, it is like a buffet of the best. It, it was so fantastic. I've heard that. The thing that got me is I, I got signed up for it when they posted it for, for 24. It's, and, and you're looking at like 350 students sold out in 12 hours. <laughs> it's just when it gets posted, anybody that's been is like, no, no, hit it, hit it, hit it, hit it. You know, I got to get signed up right now. Um, it's, it is, it is worth making time for. Um, and it's a three day, it's Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Um, but really, really good stuff. Um, where, where do you guys see yourself moving forward? Are you just going to continue building on what you got? Are you guys, are you guys adding, uh, and I've seen both of you with rifles in your, in your social media stuff. Are you guys doing rifle classes, shotgun classes, mostly pistol? What do you do? Uh, I mean, I, I kind of hung my hat on pistol training, although, uh, man, especially, so I have to make sure I, I feel like I'm qualified enough to teach something before I offer a class, right? Absolutely. Could I teach an intro shotgun class? Sure. Am I good at shotgun shooting? Not nearly as good as I should be as an instructor. I think the one reason I've really focused on taking more carbine in the last two years is I want to get to the point where I, I can confidently and effectively teach, teach uh, you know, basic to intermediate carbine. And do it well. And I actually shoot rifle much, much better than I shoot pistol. Um, and so that's something I'm definitely adding this year is is probably a beginner and maybe intermediate carving class. Um, maybe a combination of the two. You know, you have to think about the student and, and what my students want. You know, I, I want to make sure I'm providing stuff that what I would consider real world people are going to apply. Right. And so how do you, you know, home defense with a carving or you know, and how often are we going to be running down the street with a carbine? Probably never. So you have to think about, you know, effective use and what the intended use is, what your students really need to learn. So I'm still kind of rolling around what that, what that class looks like before I offer it. But yeah, carbine for sure. Continue to teach intermediate and advanced pistol. Uh, I think Jeremy and I, have, we found a love for each other to teach classes together. So we had a lot of fun and, and uh, you know, I, I think, I'd love to do a little travel, you know, go, you know, spend a weekend with some, some folks and teach a couple of different classes to two different, three different groups, that kind of thing. So yeah, just continue to add that. Uh, I, I can attest to the stay in your lane mantra. I think when I first started, I had visions of offering, man, I'm going to, I mean, my, I, my specialty is pistol. I started pistol. I shoot competition with pistol. I take great pride in owning people with my P365. I just, the fact that some of these guys can come out with Star Trek phasers looking things and I can shoot better than them with my little gun. I, I love it. Um, I relish in that. So I, I am obviously wanting to do more with pistol. If I can add even an intro to competition shooting with pistol or mm -hmm. something like that, yes. Uh, as far as rifle goes, I do an intro to uh, carbine, intro to rifle carbine class, and it's it's a very basic course. And the reason I stuck to that and did not label it as a one or a two or a three, and, and reason I don't have any of those listed is because I don't offer a two or three right now. Um, maybe, maybe in the next few years, um, but it comes back to a stay in your lane, what you're good at thing. I know there are people that can instruct on rifle way better than me in the area. And that's because they know rifle and that's what they, that's, that's an expertise that they have. Um, I'm not going to just take people's money and tell them I'm teaching them level two or level three uh, skills with a rifle. When the second they go take someone else's course and they realize, wow, <laughs> that's not anything like that. So I, I did an intro, actually my first intro rifle carbine class 
by myself. I had a co-instructor last year who was really good at it. Um, not with me anymore, but it was my first by myself. So this was one of those things where, yeah, I've mastered the fundamentals with a rifle pretty well and can teach it. And that's, that's where things are at. I get a lot of questions about the rifle. And the reason being, I think we can all agree that the AR-15 has quickly become the home defense weapon of choice. I mean, for, and for good reason. Um, but I think going down the road, maybe the intro stays where it's at for me for a while. Um, I want a lot more experience on a rifle. I, I get to the range fully intended to practice more with rifle and then end up sticking to the pistol for longer than I intended. Um, and that's just because that, that thing is like, I mean, that is an extension of me that I just take great pride in owning people at. So that's good stuff. <clears throat> Sproles, how do they, how do, how do our folks contact you if they want to, want to check into some training? Yeah. Um, Sproles shooting.com. Um, you know, trying to keep those classes up to date. Uh, they can contact me there, email my phone numbers on there. Uh, I'm a pretty down to earth dude, you know, call me, text me. Facebook. Um, I'm not a huge social media person with my, with my sports shooting. Zim does a much, much better job of that than I do. Uh, I have, um, I, I, it's just not my expertise, but they can contact me through sports uh, and they can just shoot me a message, ask about that, inquire about, you know, private classes, private training. If they don't see something they want to ask about it or talk about today, yeah, just hit me up and, and call me and be happy to talk about it with folks. Uh, I'm, I'm pretty, I'm, I'm just a normal dude who loves to instruct. Uh, so yeah, just reach out that way. Yeah, he does. He does a really good job too, guys. Um, and that's Sproles, S-P-R-O-L-E-S shooting.com. So that's correct. Jeremy, how they get you? Uh, he's, by the way, he's, he's far from just normal dude. He's abnormal. <laughs> that out there. But, Appreciate that, brother. Uh, yeah. Love him to death. Uh, it would be, uh, look, as he said, I'm big into social media, so I, I do have a Facebook page that now is reaching the 2,000 followers and, and likes, which is a pretty big milestone for us considering the battle we've made with Facebook. Um, but Facebook, you can just search Middle Tennessee Firearms Training LLC. will be the only one that comes up. That's one thing unique about what I did choose. It doesn't seem that unique, but when you start searching for it, it is the only one that comes up for that. So that's cool. Uh, you can check us out on the website. That's mid 10. So it's M I D T N firearms training.com. I got email. I got phone numbers listed message me on Facebook, follow us on Facebook. Uh, I'm on Instagram as well. Oh, cool. You guys going to be at S 12 this year. 100%. Yes, actually uh, I volunteered to help and my volunteer ship was accepted. Shockingly. Yeah. I'm surprised by that. Actually. I haven't <laughs> talked to Mick. I heard about that. So I'm really nervous. Wow. <laughs> Yeah, I don't I don't know, man. Like I got off the phone with them and I told I told Terry, I was like, well, I'm going back. And she said, we're going to Italy. You can't do that. And I said, no, no, I'm volunteering to help out. And she said, he's going to eat you alive. <laughs> <laughs> and Rob's going to throw you on the ground again. <laughs> Probably so. Probably so. That video is still out there on the interwebs if people want to search for it. It's that's, beautiful. That's it fabricated. <laughs> artificial intelligence don't listen to him don't listen to him it happened oh men thank you so much for for jumping on and joining us today anytime, anytime. appreciate you guys sharing your stuff and thanks rob look forward to seeing you guys this fall yes sir Sounds thank great. you appreciate appreciate you asking this means a lot you bet bye guys see you